Let's do all the drugs. When things go wrong, people usually end up in the hospital. Managing overdoses, clinical toxicology, those make up an important part of emergency medicine and my day-to-day -day practice. So I thought I'd share with you how I go about managing a magic mushroom overdose. Psilocybin is a naturally occurring chemical compound found within certain mushroom species responsible for the hallucinogenic effect. In 1970, it was made illegal under the Controlled Substances Act, stating that it had a high abuse potential and little to no medical value. Over the decades, societal views have shifted, and in 2018, Denver became the first city to decriminalize it. There's also been a push to study its potential efficacy in the treatment of anxiety, depression, and PTSD. But at this time, the vast majority of use remains recreational, with little to no guidance from the professional medical community. Toxicity is centered on the amount of the substance ingested. Too much of anything is potentially dangerous. If we call the therapeutic effect of psilocybin hallucinations, then let's call the toxic effect drug-induced agitation, or a bad trip. Don't go to jail, look at you got shit all over the place, don't go to jail. So what do you do for a bad trip? The good news is, is that it's self-limited, meaning that it'll go away on its own. For psilocybin, that's usually about three to five hours. The peak effect is in the one to four hour mark. So as long as you prevent the person from doing something irreversible. You are freaking out, man and they'll usually be fine. The psilocybin will be metabolized out of their system, they'll become more sober, and they should become themselves again. Making sure that they stay safe is sometimes easier said than done. Don't, what's wrong? Stop, stop. When I see people in the emergency room for drug-induced agitation, usually by that point, they require chemical sedation. Doctors, everybody ready. In some cases, I am able to de-escalate the situation verbally um, or without medicines, but a lot of the times, by the time some, someone gets to the hospital, sedation is usually necessary. A case I had recently was LSD-induced agitation. There was a young gentleman brought in by police and paramedics for acting out at a, at a gas station. When I went to go see him, he was really unhelpful, which is fine had he just slept it off. but. Instead, he kept creating a scene, destroying property, walking into other patients' rooms. And for his safety, staff safety, and for the work environment, the appropriate thing to do in that case was to chemically sedate him. There's different medications that, that I can use, and I'll go into detail in other videos on which ones I use and why I use them. But in this case, this gentleman required two doses of a combination of an antipsychotic haloperidol and a benzodiazepine lorazepam, and he required two separate doses of those two medicines. After he got the second dose, he slept for about five hours, and when he woke up, he was a lot more sober and was able to give us a phone number of a, of a friend to come pick him up. If you're having a bad trip, or you know someone that's having a bad trip, then really you just want to try to keep them as calm as possible and let time do its thing and let their body work the psilocybin out of their system. The risk factors for having a bad trip or drug-induced agitation would be taking too much, co-ingestion, so taking the psilocybin with a lot of other substances like um, cocaine, methamphetamine, spice, those are common agents um, that I see causing people to be agitated enough to be brought to the hospital. Doing it in an unsafe environment, so doing it with sketchy people and sketchy places will lend itself to having a bad experience or potentially freaking out. And finally, if you have risk factors for mental illness or you've been diagnosed, then using um, psychoactive substances may not be the best idea. In terms of the lethal effect of psilocybin, psilocybin has a very high LD50, meaning that you'd have to take a massive quantity to get to lethal doses. 
The lethal complications we worry about are organ failure, hyperthermia, and seizures. So for organ failure, the organ we're referring to is the kidneys. And the way in which it's damaged is through muscle breakdown, leading to something called rhabdomyolysis. The, the muscle proteins that's broken down and enters the bloodstream clogs up the kidneys and causes kidney damage. Usually this is reversible, and a lot of the times the only treatment that's needed is fluids, but it can progress to requiring dialysis, but very, very, very rarely is that the case, and even more rare is it likely to cause permanent kidney failure. The other potential lethal complication is the hyperthermia and seizures. So I've never seen a case of hallucinin-induced hyperthermia and seizures, but I have seen it with polypharmacy or co-ingestion. We had two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high-powered blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, also a quarter tequila, quarter rum, case of beer, pint of raw ether, two dozen amyl. The cases I've seen have been people who have taken combinations of spice, cocaine, amphetamines, and they come in having seizures, overheated, uh, near comatose, or very aggressive, very agitated, it could vary. And in those cases, the treatment would be active cooling measures, aggressive seizure control, and aggressive supportive care. And what that looks like in terms of the active cooling is we'll put ice packs in their groin, in their axilla, uh, in their forehead, we'll spray them with the cool mist, we'll have a fan nearby, and we'll put on the cooling blanket. And in terms of the seizure control, there's different medications that we give to help stop the seizures. The only problem is, is that it also stops the respiratory drive. So in that case, usually we need to put the person into a medically induced coma with the ventilator. And I'll go into detail in other videos in terms of how we do that. But in this case, as long as we're cooling them down, stopping the seizures, then we can keep them on life support long enough for their body to metabolize out the substances they've taken. And hopefully, Afterwards, we'll find out that there was no permanent damage suffered. Usually the biggest risk factor is if they've had prolonged lack of oxygen to the brain, they could have what's called anoxic brain injury. But if we could get them on the ventilator quicker and quickly, quickly enough, then usually we could avoid that consequence. And to summarize how I manage psilocybin overdose, with the lethal effects, the rhabdomyolysis, the seizures, the hyperthermia, that requires lots of fluids, cooling them down, strong antiepileptics, which may stop the respiratory drive, in which case we put them on the mechanical ventilator and support them long enough for their body to metabolize out the offending agents and to normalize. And the case of a toxic effect where someone's having a bad trip, then really just keep them safe, keep them calm. And in two to five hours, they should sober enough to be a lot more like themselves and hopefully would have stopped them from doing something that they'd regret in the future. So I hope you guys learned something. If you want to see any specific topics, let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.